Hi everyone and welcome to Tap Into Your Creativity. I am so excited to be back after taking some time off and I'm going to bring in my guest and friend, Nino Uniardi, to join us hopefully real soon. I just invited him and there he is. <laughs> Hello. Hi Nino, how are you? How are you? Uh, can you? Can you hear me all right? I'm trying. Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you just fine. I'm so excited okay. that um, that it just you came in without a glitch, and um, isn't that good? <laughs> yeah, perfect. I have them ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited that you're here, and I'm I'm yeah. actually I took some t personal time off, um, and it has been so nice to be away from social media for a little bit and just mm -hmm. kind of just connect to where I needed to be connected and just feels really good and I'm so energized and happy to be back so That's I can't good. imagine not coming back um yeah without you having my my back on my first interview back so I'm so excited Nino thank you so yeah. much for being here no problem this is good I love it it's uh <laughs> Saturday it's been morning. more than a it's been more than a year since our first interview for people that don't know yeah. that we already had an interview a long time ago. I can't even believe that it's been uh, tap into your cre creativity has been over two years now. Can you really? It? I thought it's longer than that. Really? Wow. No, it started right in COVID. Started like April oh, 4th yeah, actually was my first interview. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And so, continue. Um, I'm going to exactly I'm going to take out the comments right now so I, we can see your face and I'll bring them on um, at the end. So people have questions for Nino, we can ask you but okay. Nino for people that didn't see our first interview, tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. Um, I'm originally from Indonesia, Jakarta, uh, really crowded place, uh, but very energetic place, I would say it's a lot, a lot going on. Um, and then I um, moved to Seattle for school and then um, for design school. And then uh, just stuck here, <laughs> basically. Uh, <laughs> why, why Seattle? Did you have family in Seattle? Yeah, I had, I had a, a cousin here who, who went to University of Washington at that time. Um, so I thought, well, there's family here. So I just, you know, came over here and, and go to school here um it was kind of like a test of you know trying to find myself meaning like what i like um i know i like art but i don't know what kind of art so i went to the art institute of seattle that's a two-year program which is kind of now i look, look looking back feels like it's it's a low uh pressure for me because i don't know what i want to do yet so i tried different things you know from graphic um, uh, illustration, advertising, all those different art kind of things, except culinary arts. I didn't try that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which Although I they think have now, a... now looking back, I think that you should. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah, there was program in that, in that school, culinary arts, but I just never thought like, well, I don't want to cook. It's like, it's too, uh, it's too hard. <laughs> so I didn't, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, but then after that, um, I decided I like uh, graphic design, um, so I I uh, I moved uh, transferred to Pasadena, California, uh, to pursue graphic and packaging design. Um, so, but uh, throughout throughout the year, throughout my life, uh, painting ho always been there, uh, you know, always on the side of of like I bring in my suitcase kind of thing, like. If I need uh, to take care of my my brain, <laughs> take care of my feelings, I took out my you know paintings. I get paint, paint whatever I want to paint. Um, yeah. So then uh, after after school, I love Seattle so much because of I guess the weather. Um, I know people <laughs> say it's rainy. It's raining right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's it, it's funny. Rain. rain makes me feel uh i don't know uh cozy somehow um so some sometimes it's, it's too it's too much rain but you know overall i would say 87.5 <laughs> percent 
<laughs> I love I love the sound of the rain. I think that's why I come back here and it's so green and it's just so different than where I grew up. Where I grew up is really hot and humid. Uh, here it's very fresh. So I think I like that contrast. So I I just ended up here in Seattle and start building uh, kind of my career in design. Um, Do you, you think know, without... that you knew in Indonesia growing up that you had this passion? Like when you were growing up, um, did you find yourself being creative and adventurous and finding ways to let out your passion for design? Um, I would say more of... Uh, actually more paintings um i i started paintings around maybe when i was 14 something like that um i don't know how how i ended up with paint set i remember my parents gave me um acrylic paint set and oil paint set and, and then i just start playing with it i paint oil paintings in my room it's like maybe about it's smaller than this room so you can smell the <laughs> smell the oil <laughs> in the bedroom. Uh, I just love that for some reason. And um, sometimes when you turn off the lights at night before you go to bed, my painting is right there, right? I I, I remember I paint like uh, um, scen scenery of uh, the landscapes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the boat. You know, when I turn it off, somehow I can I can see something different that gave me ideas because of the darkness you see something different. So it's like, wow, that's, you know, then I woke up and then the next day I, I paint something, uh, you know, refine it or whatever, you know? So yeah. Oh, I, since, love, I love that. I love yeah, so that. try to turn I, it off. I turn do off that, the lights. I, you know, I yeah. do that in my studio sometimes. Um, I turn mm -hmm. off the lights um, just to find yeah. the value and, the, you know, um, but I've never done it at night. So I, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At night when and you, so, you know, kind so of groggy. So you really started painting before you went into design. That was really maybe yes. where you started to think that maybe this was your your time. And yeah, was it hard yeah. for you to leave your family behind? Uh, at that time, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, when you're <laughs> when you're a teenager, you, you want to get out of your house somehow. Um, no, I did not that I want to leave. No, I mean. I didn't like, I remember my sister had a hard time uh, because I was away, uh, you know, that, I mean, now I can, I can see now looking back, um, the person who leaves, it, it's easier for them to, because it's exciting time, you know, new place, but the person who left behind, it's kind of harder because uh, your routine kind of changed, you know, the, even the sound in, in the room is different, There's, that person's not there anymore. Now, I, if I look back, it's like, oh, <laughs> I should have, you know, paid more attention, you know, things like that. I think maybe because, you know, I'm a parent now. So, like, I don't want the kids to leave, <laughs> you know, like, uh, yeah. But It's hard. I, I, I share that uh, sentiment with you because when I moved from Mexico, um, you know, I was excited and yet I was also nervous for the yeah. experience that I was going to find and now being a parent um, and seeing what my parents went through when I left um, yeah. and now me myself right. going through it it's it's really hard right yeah I mean it's really my... hard <laughs> yeah I keep <laughs> I keep just poking my my older uh, daughter like uh, the school locally is, is really good by the way <laughs> 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 oh, my so, so once you graduated and moved back to Seattle, um, did you start working right away in design? Was that your, in, was yeah. it industrial design or? Uh, graphic design. Packaging so, design? Graphic, graphic yeah, design? Yeah, graphic and packaging design. Uh, but I ended up, I didn't do a lot of packaging design because there's not a lot of project, you know, packaging project in Seattle. I did like a couple of them, but most, most of that project like is in there, either in San Francisco, you know, um, LA or or New York, those type of things. So, I did um, other graphic design work, basically just you know annual reports, um, logo design, um, you know, all all sort of sort of those things. Um, but then slowly morph into more of a digital design, like you know website and 
in product and things like that. As in like digital products. Um, but, you know, painting still, still always, you know, there. Um, I think because partly I, I didn't know how to, um, to make that as a, as a career, right? As a, as a painter. I don't, I don't know any painter from Indonesia that I, you know, I, I can follow or I know them personally. So I don't, I don't have a, an idea of how to do that. So, yeah. Um, what yeah, what I mean, year, what year did you start painting more um, professionally, you think? Or, or for yourself, when did you actually start or you never stopped, you were doing both? I always doing both, but um, I think in 27, 2017, 20, 2018, I think I, I, I do more, like more regularly. Uh, before it feels like only when I feel something, then I do it. You know, if I, if I uh, frustrated on something, I, I express that in the paint. It's like, it's like a therapy, <laughs> you know, uh, or if I'm happy, exactly. I just do something. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think around 2018, I, I kind of like, you know, um, I, I do it more regularly. Either either I have a need or not, I just I do it more. So and and you yeah. grew exponentially, I would say in your in your painting from you know we're talking almost four years yeah. ago um, of starting pretty much from zero and now finding your voice and being represented yeah. from galleries and and um how was how did you do that how did you first is how did you find your voice um in painting and yeah. how did you grow so quickly um let's see grow, i feel like grow, uh finding finding the finding the voice is just um not just I have to speak a lot, meaning, you know, for us, the voice is the painting, right? The, so I just do a lot of that. And, and slowly, I get more clarity of what kind of voice I like or don't like. Um, now, on the surface level, right, the voice is the style. Like, what kind of style I, I want to do? Uh, but I think on a deeper level, it's about what is it I want to say about my painting? Literally, the voice, you know, the uh, my point of view on certain things. Um, so I kind of dig deeper on um, what is it that I want to say other than this looks beautiful or this look a certain things or design certain way. Um, so I, that's how I kind of go through how I grew up as a kid the plus and the minus, right? That's why people ask about childhood a lot. I think because painting is about going back and be a kid again. And what does that mean to you being a kid? What do you like most when you were a kid? You know, those kind of things, those questions. Um, so I think I tap into um, the idea where I didn't feel fit in when I grew up because I, I look different in my neighborhood. Um, and then, um, that just kind of give an idea of, I don't know how I connected to food, <laughs> but somehow, maybe because I like, like to eat and all that stuff, um, I, see, I see people as ingredients and ingredients are different and just put them all together. So that kind of the, underneath the message of my work. Um, so, so that becomes the anchor of, I believe in that, I believe that people should work together even though they're different, just like different food, different, you know, um, not different food, different ingredients into a food becomes a beautiful meal. So that's the, like the, the metaphor. And I believe in that. And, and then I'm just going to take that as my guide. And then that's my why. And the how I can do different things. Not right now I'm doing abstract painting based on that idea. So um, I think maybe because of that clarity um, of the story, then people can see, especially in abstract painting, right? It's, it's so open, open-ended, like you can, people can look at it and, and can, um, 
can take it however they want. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have if you have a, a message behind it, a story that you believe in, that's a good starting point. Like have a common starting point, and then they can branch out however they want to see it. You know. Um, so, I mean, as far as like, I don't know, growing, I didn't. I don't have a real plan. Like I'm gonna grow this blah blah blah. You know, like next year I'm gonna be. I don't have a like business plan <laughs> or business plan. <laughs> uh, I think the biggest thing I learned from um, the book was that uh, the big magic. Uh, what's her name? Um, I, put, I I lost her her name, but uh, it's about like you should create from um, the feeling of abundance. So you, you, just, you just create and share. I think maybe this is the, the, the idea. When I, when I post things on, on Instagram, I try to not just showing my work and my work for sale, but more about how I do things. Your so it's about how, sorry? Your process, my process. But the idea is, um, how can I how can I give, then the take, um, and it's not like tricking anybody. It's more like I just want to share what I know, so people can benefit from it. If you, I Elizabeth feel like when Gilbert, I, when I, Elizabeth Gilbert. There you go. Yes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's that's my big big book for me. I feel like. <laughs> yes. The Sorry, big let's magic go back from to Elizabeth book. Gilbert. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Let, let's go back for that book. To me, it just gives me hope and kind of um, peace inside of me saying it's not about like what where you want to go or what, what you're going to get at the end. It's just about creating every day. It doesn't matter where you're going to go get. It just you have to be in peace with yourself. How you how you come back to the studio every day, every day. Um, also, be be okay with uh, pick your sh shit sandwich. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> so in every things that we do, every job, there's always uh. the shit sandwich. So pick which one. <laughs> So you know, I I've been struggling with you know, should I should I do, should I be painting full time? Should I should I do you know, um, design full time? Which one's better? So that book is kind of like giving a, an aha moment. It doesn't matter which one you pick. There will be like negative things in in each one of them. So be okay with those shits. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, I mean like, embrace that. Embrace that challenge, whatever challenge that is. Like, for example, as an artist, you have to kind of be an entrepreneur, right? You have to be kind of like you have to work for yourself. So you have to be self reliant, self motivated, and all that stuff. There's no boss telling you, like, what to do, or what to do next, what project you need to do. Um, so you need to be okay with that. How to mo motivate yourself. And then the, sh the shit sandwich, I would think. Like, like packaging, like packing your packing your stuff to get shipped, that is pretty. <laughs> I don't know. I have to embrace that. It's it's hard at at first, but then slowly you learn how you you learn the tools. You learn you learn how to make things more efficient. Um, so I think. <laughs> so yeah, that's just an example of you know, uh, in anything that we do, there's always you know. That's why I think that you know this profession that we're in being fine artists and um you know painting and finding the validation for ourselves um and being happy with what we're doing no matter if it's a shit sandwich or not um, <laughs> um it's it's really challenging because you have to find that abundance in yourself you have yeah. to find that happiness um even when you're struggling and yep. you have to push yourself to be your best version of yourself, especially when you're in the studio and, you know, not having the pressure of, you know, either galleries or just the outside world. 
um, mm -hmm. with our own pressure is enough. Uh, but finding yeah. that balance is where the magic happens. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and so, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, how, so, I mean, you've been working full time um, mm -hmm. as a graphic designer. Can you just tell me? Like, I think it has changed so much since you started graphic design. And we, I know we have a lot of graphic designers um, watching now. And is it still a world that is enormous to be a part of? And would you suggest still being a part of it? And what do you see the opportunities in being a graphic designer now? Um, it's, I would say well my base was graphic design but now i'm 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 working on software more like software design mm -hmm. um so it's less of like um i'll call it traditional graphic design like mm -hmm. print and logo design and brochure design um posters i don't do much of that anymore <clears throat> i do more of a they call it user experience design so i built software with other people like with uh, with developer, with they call interaction design. So mm -hmm. these people are looking at how things are supposed to work. Like the things that we're looking at right now, this, the screen, right? There are buttons and like when you press something where it goes and the function of it. So I'm on, on the more of the visual part of the thing. So we're kind of partnering with, 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 with them. Um, so it's a, it's a different kind of graphic design, I guess. But the base mm -hmm. is similar, right? It's about um, composition, uh, hierarchy, color, um, even the story, like where where your eyes gonna go first, where to read and things like that. So um, it's, it's, a visual, it's a visual design, it's a visual storytelling as well. So um, it's morphing slowly. Mm -hmm. So I would say if, if if you are starting out as a graphic designer, that's that's like a, di a different world than user experience design. It's similar, but it's different. Um, and the opportunity for user experience design is is higher. Like a lot more, now a lot more companies mm -hmm. um, hiring uh, designers in-house. When I started, there's none of that. It's more like you go to the design house, you know, um, agencies to work for other for like bigger companies um, a project base now like the big companies they want everything in-house because it's easier and also it's a longer term right a person like a designer needs to go from beginning to the end so you need to understand how to build it you have to you have to work through the problem with developers um, if you hire um, an outside agency they just give you ideas and drop it off and that's that's just half of the story it's like you know two percent of the problems that you have to solve um but yeah so if, if it's a different it's a different world now <laughs> if you, yeah um but there's so do still... you take you do you take this knowledge and and apply it to your painting uh, yeah, definitely. The, the way that uh, you're thinking, the way that you're approaching, um, approach, yeah. yeah, is right. it, is it, do you, do you take that then and apply it on how you start your painting and how you start activating the canvas and how you finish the painting? Um, I would say not, not exactly one-to-one. -one. I would say it's, it's more opposite. For, for doing design, I have to solve somebody else's problem, right, and work with other people. I think, that experience of working with other people and and meeting deadlines and all that stuff that really applies to how I operate day to day. Um, make sure I have cadence, the right things, and 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 meeting that deadline, things like that. But when I work like activating the canvas, I want to do the opposite. I don't want to think. <laughs> I want to <laughs> display and and just it is for myself and and all of that, right? Um, so I like that contrast between the two worlds. Design is solving somebody else's problem. Painting is about me. I mean, it sounds like, <laughs> sounds weird, but like, 
you know, it's it's about how I express the things and and thinking about it. Uh, and another um, benefit from you know working in the design world too is when I approach commission work. When I do commission work, depending on the client, at first I I I approach it almost like a design project. There's boundaries, there are, you know, expectation. So I, I set it out that way. Um, I ask a lot of questions first, figure out like what, what is it that they like about my work, what they don't like about my work. So it's really, it's almost like, it's not a wishy-washy thing. It should be pretty clear what they're gonna get because it's, it's for them. So it's in a way I'm solving somebody else's problem too, right? It's a commission. Um, some clients just say, I just like what you did there and do whatever you want, you know? Mm -hmm. They trust, they trust you. Yeah. But some clients, maybe a designer who has a client. So you have like middle person, <laughs> that's a little yep. bit challenging, right? So they have specs. So I have to treat it that way. Um, there's a spec. I have to follow the spec in a way. Um, and there's a, dis uh, there's a, um, there's a feedback loop that I have to deal with too. All right. So it's a, it's a different thing, but I learned that from doing design work. So that, that kind of applies, right? A hundred percent it applies. Do you show them the process then? So yeah, for them to say yay or nay, and, and this is the time to make changes if there need to be changes. Yes, uh, I do. So in, in the beginning, um, again, depending on the, uh, on the, on the, on the client, sometimes I, I put out a kind of like a mood board saying, mm -hmm this is the pieces that you like from my previous work and this is what you don't like and the color scheme that you like and um, uh, the story that you want to tell. Um, so I ask what favorite food, you know, the favorite food, favorite colors um, or any stories from your family, if it's a family, you know, what is it that you want to say about this? Sometimes they don't want to say anything. It's just, you know, it's about, about the visual of it, you know, and that's okay. Um, and that's kind of like, this is the spec for us to agree on. You know, it's about green, let's say, it's about, uh, about cauliflower, <laughs> whatever, you know. So that's, <laughs> that's the starting point. And then I can elaborate on how I execute that. And uh, I give them feedback, I mean, not feedback, give them um, update on, oh, this is the first round, you know, what do you think and all that stuff. And I said, you know, I, I think I'm not there yet, but do you, do you see anything, any of a concern? Um, and then, you know, the feedback. Uh, sometimes you know, they I, I do good, a but... lot of um, commission work myself. And I think what I yeah. have found that has helped me and my clients is I use Procreate um, mm. on my iPad and yeah. I take a picture of the actual space or if I'm not, you know, if they're out of, uh, town, they send yeah. me a picture of their living room. And then uh -huh. I superimpose a painting that I'm thinking I'm going to do for them. So that way they can see the space and they can see what I'm thinking. And it's a great way for them to feel comfortable to give me the go ahead. And yeah. for me to know that we're all on the same page. That's good. Yeah. Pro the, Procreate definitely helps. Yeah. The, um, also for editing things like that some I, I haven't done it much but i did a couple <clears throat> just a study of oh you know the client wants to do this and that and let me try right it. right yeah the the, and, the and problem the other, for me the other yeah go ahead the the uh the challenge for me sometimes when i try it on procreate it looks good and i have to transfer it to the real thing <laughs> it might look well, different they know, <laughs> so, I, I tell I, them this is not the real thing this is something yeah. for you to look at and, yeah. you know, if you feel comfortable and you trust me because you came to me, you know that I'm going to do something similar. It's not going to be the same because the scale and just, you know, mm -hmm. everything is going to be a little different. But at least they have, they get the feel of it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah. Nice. So it's a, it's setting, a good... setting expectation correctly, yeah. Exactly, exactly. And the other thing that I do to cover myself is I do have a contract. Um, especially with people that I don't know, or if I'm working with designers, um, mm -hmm. where I get paid half um, okay. up front, yeah. and then yeah. half at the end. That way, 
I'm covered at least for my materials. And, you know, if anything happens, then I'm covered. Yeah. I don't know how you yeah. do that. Um, in the past, well, m most of my uh, commission, I, I don't ask for anything. <laughs> uh, for, a, for a bigger company, uh, if I work with, with a, like a design house, they usually have a contract already. Right. Um, and how they want to proceed, like either either uh, three type um, uh, three invoices or two, you know. Um, but if it's person to person, um, usually I I I say you know um, let, let's just go for it kind of thing. I'm not I'm not gonna give you the piece if you're not happy at the end. Um, and then if you don't want it, you don't have to pay. I'll keep it. That's how yeah. I do it. Yeah. So yeah. I, I did it for a long time that way. And then I got, it doesn't matter, but I think both yeah. ways are, are uh, good. And it just depends. Yeah. The, like I said, it just depends with the client and, and what yeah. your, your commission is and so forth. So how are you using, you think social media now to help um, yourself in, in, in having people know your work and uh -huh. see, I know that you, Post yeah. a lot. Are you still? Do you still have a rhythm to it? Is there a? Is there anything that you want to share with us that has worked for you? Um, yeah. So I I have a. I usually post at the end of the day, and I try to post, not to forcing it. If I don't feel like posting, I'm not going to post. The reason I post is because it's part of the flow. So the flow, you need to figure out what's it's your the flow for you. For everybody's different. But the flow for me is like. 5.30 or 6 o'clock, if I'm done working, either working on the design or the work, I have a, I have the phone with me. I just post it, right? Um, and usually I record things on um, on my studio if I, you know, do a time lapse or whatever. It's just part of the things that I do. Um, I try to not to do, like, extra work. Um, and then and then use it that way. And And the type of post is also important. Uh, like I mentioned before, the post should, I should think about it as um, how can I, how can I help? That's, it has to come from that source. Yeah, sometimes I post what I've done, right? And then I put, sometimes I put for sale or whatever. I rarely say the price though. I just put, this is the piece. You know, sometimes I re repurpose uh, a past post as well. And because not everybody's seen it. Um, and that's okay. Uh, so, so I think the most important thing I try to always remember is how can I, how can my posts help others, help other artists? It's, it's, so it's less about selling. It's about how can I, how can I help you? Um, I think that's to me that's a win-win. Um, it's win because when I explain my process, explain like how I do pack packaging or how I um, mix paint or whatever. It's also a um, a second time I learn, right? I have to kind of deconstruct my process because sometimes I just do it without thinking about it because I already done it so many times. Uh, so that's like learning twice for me. Um, the plus for the viewer is, well, obviously they hopefully they. Uh, gain some, you know, new tricks or something for me, right? Um, so I think when people follow and and uh, consume Are engaged. content, yeah, there, it's it's not about me, me, me. It's about how can we lift each other up. I think that's it's it has to come from that, and it will grow uh, organically. Um, but but again. My point is, when I post, it's not about how I how I grow it. Maybe that's back of my mind, but it's not the focus. The focus is more of how can my how can I be more useful, and that's about it. That's it. Again, and and that's it's cool. coming through. It's it's one hundred percent coming through. And I think you have a humor to how you approach your social media, mm -hmm. so it's just it's fun to yeah. watch you and and you make it really um, 
engaging and um you're you have a very unique voice that you are very true to yourself and mm -hmm. and that makes us feel so comfortable because you are so honest you. and you are so open and um and i love what you just said that it's lifting each other up because that's yeah. what i try to do on tap into your creativity you know it's like yeah. lifting the artists and giving them voices and and um it's just it's a win-win when you do that yeah yeah no, it's good. I mean, you know, like I said, I mean, this has to be uh, real, genuine. Genuinely, you want to do that, you know. I mean, if not, it it could it could show up like wrongly, but um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and um, so you know, you um are donating a piece um for Feeding yeah. America, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, I would love for you to share with us um the peas the title this, and everything you can see this one yeah yes uh yeah so the the title is lemon cream lemon cream mocha pie um <laughs> so there's some there's some uh, we can see like lemon kind of color some kind of mocha and i don't know it feels like there's always cream in my in my paintings i think because i like to use white <laughs> so it's like yes. oh it's a cream <laughs> lemon cream pie i hear or lemon yes it's, yeah it's, yeah i love that um, um is it a mixed media or just acrylic or what did you use on that yeah mostly acrylic but i have um color pencil as well in here um mostly yeah color pencil and 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 acrylic so and it's so, on on a wood panel um so you can see and then you know it's ready to hang um so. so let's show it again real close to the camera so you guys can see it we're asking four hundred dollars um for this piece um a hundred percent of the proceeds will go to feeding america that means you will be helping four thousand um people in need for um food and uh, by purchase people. yes so if you can imagine the impact that you do by just um, somebody buying that. And um, yeah. please um, DM me or Nino if you're interested in purchasing this incredible painting by Nino. Um, thank you again for doing this for Feeding America and for tapping to your creativity. I couldn't do it without you. Um, thank so, you for, yeah. Yeah, and uh, Nino, will you take us around and show us your studio a little bit and show oh, us what you're sure. working on? <laughs> You want me to show you my messy stuff? Okay. Of course. That's what, I, that's what we're here for, right? That's what we love. We, I don't want yeah. you to clean your space. I want to see I that know. studios. Let's see if I can uh, turn around. Yeah, there you go. You can see, yeah? <laughs> there you go. That's, this is my camera when I, whenever I do uh, Zoom with my, uh, my community. Um, it's pretty simple setup, actually. Which um, we'll come back to that, Nino. We'll come back to, oh, sure. to yeah, your just... community because we need to tell people what you're doing and your mentorship. So Okay, cool. So uh, let's just go around here. This is just some of the things that kind of, you know, for inspiration. I have like little things here and there. Um, uh, my old work also as a reminder, like where I've been, uh, what I like to do as well in the past. Um, it was again, you know, some of the decoration, my notes, it's really, <laughs> Oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> uh, not digital at all. <laughs> this I is the thing that. I like I, whenever I have idea, I just to write it down and stick it, you know? Um, so I, it's, it's just there. Um, but I also I have some, that digital notes too sometimes. This is uh, like one of the cart uh, when I put a lot of uh, packaging materials like, you know, fragile, all these tools. Again, it's it's not organized. <laughs> I need to, I need to it's clean this up. It's organized chaos. That's how I yeah. describe it, right? <laughs> I have some old stuff in here. Um, you know, some, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, these are like old, uh, packaging materials that you know I, I bought something and so I can save it if they still look good I just put it here some sometimes because you don't know you know you might be able to use it right. this is all all of my canvases um, uh, things that I have to work on uh, throughout this year uh, this is some of the 
this is kind of like uh, some of it ready to go. Let's see. Do you like working more on canvas or on board? Or it depends on the size. Uh, I like canvas more, um, especially for the weight itself. Um, it's just hard to ship when it when you put it on the board. But so smaller, smaller on the on the board is okay. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, this is my kind of main uh, table. <laughs> Look at this paint. <laughs> bunch of paints. Uh, <laughs> most of these are Lucas. Lucas paint. I, I love Lucas. Yeah. It's just yeah. so rich and beautiful and I love that you're yeah. using that. Yeah. I like the colors. Yeah. I also yeah. use Liquitex. So I'm not like has to be uh, one or the other, you know, some golden if I need to. Uh, but um, I try different things. Um, and then this is how I how I mix my paint now. I, I use this uh, kind of soup <laughs> leftover stuff. Um, <laughs> recently, I bought this uh, Nofa color. I want to try this out, uh, see how that goes. Uh, in the past, I have um, the... Uh, it it is really white. the same consistency as Lucas, I found, uh, that Nova yeah. and, and Lucas have the same kind of consistency. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Good. Um and of course, yeah. your your um, markers there that you love using. Mm -hmm. This is all the markers. Um, and those are in the back. It's just all the brushes that I don't really use. So I <laughs> like I need to put them <laughs> somewhere. And um, soft pastels. This is about like soft pastels. I don't have a specific brand. I just got this from Michaels, I think. Um, because it's it's usually my... When you use the soft pastels on top of your acrylic, how do you seal the canvas? What do you use? What do you recommend? I spray, I spray it with um, a fixative, or sometimes mm -hmm. I use the uh, um, this polyurethane. Um, this guy. Okay, is that is that um, a working cool. fixative? It's 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 work. It's similar. It's working mm -hmm. so far. I think. It's funny. One of the reasons I like this because of the the nib doesn't clog that that much. Oh, interesting. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, because yeah, I just got also um, a golden with the UV. Uh, I don't have it. Protector. Yeah. Yeah. So that yep. that should work too. Yeah. Um, do you do you like the satin or gloss yep. or which one do you use? I like satin, mm -hmm. so it's not too too shiny. Uh, yeah. but you know has a little bit of finish to it uh this is uh well ikea uh cabinet so nothing in there and this is my small pieces like the four by four um oh, I love. all of these can you are... go in can you show us yeah. a little closer yeah so this is more of a like experiment pieces uh yeah. but at the same time trying to be more uh intentional as well like you know there's a story behind it and and or is there, put a, I, see, a I see collage is is that collage yep. that i see okay yeah these are collage some uh, like uh, a mix you know these are collage and and acrylic paint um yeah, i love like, that like that one too right that's a collage yeah um, this is another collage but it's going to the to the side <laughs> um, oh i love that that's very cool so the volume of that it's, mm -hmm. it's so it's really more like to, uh, yeah really fun like and, sculpture yeah and i love the layering of the collage it just has that depth that you go in and out of it and you you mm. leave it, not everything is perfectly flat which i love right like this one too like playing with with the paint so it's it's a thick paint and you just press press to it um yeah, paint. I love it. It looks industrial in a way to me. Um, uh huh. And I, I, it's just like I love the the texture and the feel of it. Yeah, there's some more up there. Um, so these, let's see, this section is more of a like a bunch of old paintings behind this. <laughs> <laughs> have to kind of clean them up. Uh, I don't know what to do with them. Some, uh, some. Do old... you reuse them if if you feel like, like if you see it again and you don't love it as much, would you go in and paint, repaint on top? Uh, yeah, sometimes. 
but like this one is so different, right? Like this is yeah, so this is more exper yeah. this is more experiment. Like um, I'll show you the old stuff, like this one, right? This is so different. I this I'm this is when when I like doing wow um, landscape, but then I, from landscape I try to do more of an abstract landscape. When um, was that, Nino? What year was that? Uh, what is this? 2005. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah you've come a long way from that. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but yeah, so when I try to do this, you know, I like the clean cleanliness of it. But then I realized I don't like doing the masking. It's too, too many like uh, tapes. So that's yeah. the part of the searching, right? What you like, what you don't like. And I like the look of it, but I don't like making it. So then, then don't do it. <laughs> you know uh those kind of things exactly. um exactly and people ask yeah. like should i stay with the same thing you know and not really you have to evolve no. you have to change you have to find what you feel comfortable with and happy yeah yeah exactly even if it sells even if that one would sell more than the the ones that you're doing now you know you yeah. have to do what makes you happy right 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 I mean, if you if it sells now and if you don't like it, I think it will it will show up at the end, like yes. you know. Yes. Um, but yeah. Uh, Ooh, let's I see. see a lot of uh, cream, lemon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> cream lemon uh, oh right now, but yeah, this is <laughs> that I'm kind of working on. Um, like here, um, this is a forty-eight by forty-eight. Um, and then also this one, also 48 by 48. Um, is that the, the size that you prefer the most? I like, yeah, 48, 48 by 60. That's the larger one. Um, or 36 by 36. I think do I, you, I don't, do you go ahead? I, I don't, I don't really, I guess don't really have like a favorite size. I, I would do any size <laughs> really. Um, and do you do you stretch your own canvas or do you buy them? I buy them. Uh, I I only stretch when it's larger than sixty by forty eight. Which so, canvas do you like to buy? I got this from Blick. Uh, yeah. The this uh, that's right here. The gallery the, wrap. The roll one. This one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, so you buy it on stretched and you paint on stretch and then you stretch it yourself. For for the larger one, yeah. But for okay. uh, for the one that's already stretched, I got it from uh, for Michaels. Okay. Uh, yeah, Michaels has sometimes they have a uh, sale. Good deals. The, yeah. Yeah. So, and it's a it's a good canvas, so it has to be. But I I, I always get the the thick one. This one. Yes, it has right? to be the yes. Yeah. Yeah. The it's weight one. is very important. You would want it the the heaviest, the better. Yeah, and and this it stretched pretty good, like really really tight. Um, so, and, and um, who does your cradling for you? Who does the framing for you? Do you have someone or the framing for the you talking your... about this? Frame? Yes. Yep. The um, wood the wood frame I got it from uh, Canvas Place in in California, um, and Good then to know. yeah, and then they ship it here, and and I. And attach it myself. Okay, so. it's called the Canvas Place. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, great, awesome. Let's see. Uh, this one is the last kind of like area here, like uh, another crate with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> so this is all my paint. Uh, originally, when I got this, I want I want to be able to bring it to here, right, to my painting area, so I can move it around. But I ended up painting on the table right in here right so sorry I, I try not to move around too fast um but yeah so so basically well, I, so I have you, this. you usually paint on the floor don't you right yeah that's also evolving right yeah. earlier maybe a couple of years ago or a year ago even I, I paint it I paint here on the wall because I like the drip sometimes you know but then I realized well, maybe I should try on on the floor. I don't know why. See, these things like happen organically. I don't know how it happened. And when it on the floor, I turn out. I like the drip 
not not the not the down drip. It's more like a splatter. Yeah. And and doing that on the floor is more natural because it just you know the gravity just you know let it let you. Splatter. How's your lower back? <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's fine. laughs> oh, I love do you, that. Like do you, kind of do you splatter from from far away then, or do you? What do you do? No. Just no. right from the top. Yeah, you don't want to. You don't want to go too far away because when it when it drops on the floor, uh, they will splatter. So I don't want that. I just want to kind of like accidental drip like this, right? So I can't do this on the wall. I have to do this on the floor. Do you use a brush or do you use a cup to do that? How do you drip it? I use I use brush, yeah. Mm -hmm. But it, it's basically like you know, just put the brush right here and just right and just literally drip. let it drip. Exactly. So what are you yeah. working on the floor now? Oh, this one, uh, I, it's about to be shipped. So this one is re ready to go. This is the larger piece. Um, so um, I'm no. sorry for let for <laughs> making you do that, but it looks no, amazing. It's okay. Thanks. Yeah, this is one of the commission piece that, uh, so I, I'm going to roll it um, and then ship it. Um, but that's, that's the, that's the last thing I need to ship right now. But then what is the paper that you're using um, to roll the, what is the, is there an archive type of uh, paper? Yeah, I said, how you pronounce it? Is it ga Gassin paper? Ga I don't know what, but I it's, think it's it almost, has some some sort of like a wax, right? Right, right. This is what you want to put it, it, and when you want to roll, you put it here, like so it doesn't touch um, the yes. back of, of it and all that stuff. If, or also, if you if you roll multiple, put this and then put the other one on top of it, and and touch touching this part instead of the cap. Okay, so now let's go back and um, let's just um, I want to hear all about. Um, is it um, glassine? Is that what you're talking about? Somebody yes. just asked. Okay. Yes, glassine. That's it. Thank you, I... Julie, <laughs> or Jules. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know all these things. Um, well, no, but you just you did. You remembered it. So tell us a little bit about your mentorship program and and how do we find you and what are you doing for artists? Yeah. So it's uh, called Spice Art Club. Uh, obviously, it's a sp <laughs> again a food theme. I have a backstory of that name, but that's okay. Next time, but you know, um, but basically, it's a space for um, artists to kind of follow me along. Um, the but the most important thing is I want to uh, make sure everybody feel safe. It's a safe space. It's a closed space, private space, uh, because sometimes when we you know. When we have questions or we want to uh, share my our work, you feel unsafe when you when you put it out, right? So this space kind of like um, our own it, community first. Like you are welcome to ask any questions, um, you know, show your work and ask for feedback. Um, so I I make sure that. First and foremost, that that place is open to be to be a safe space. Uh, no crazy judgment, really. You know, it's, <laughs> it, we're working together as the same artists uh, trying to grow. So, and uh, and it's basically I share my work, my daily work, uh, my 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 plus, my minus, my failure. Um, so you you just can see like. You just saw a behind the scene, you know, that is the surface level is behind the scene, but how I work every day and, um, and, and can, can kind of learn from that. I also ask questions to the members so I can learn as well, you know, so it's, it's kind of like both ways and share each other's um, journey. Yeah. I love so, that because it... what you're saying is that you can be vulnerable, but it's a containment um, place of love where yeah. you can open up yourself and be yourself and ask all the questions without feeling judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, 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 and it's, a, it's a process to get there, right? It's not like every, somebody come in and can just go, you know, be themselves right, right, right. away. Right. You know, we need to earn that trust with each other. Right. 
and they right. take some time. Um, uh, so, so I have like core uh, lessons in there that people can start uh, with their own pace. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can engage to the community, just like in Instagram or in Facebook type of format. It's kind of feed, and then you can post uh, images, ask questions, uh, engage with the community, and and I always there and <laughs> answering questions. So I ask questions as well. So it's an interaction, interactive. I love that. Um, you know, virtual space. So where where can people sign up? Well, right now it's still closed. <laughs> uh, I only open January and June right now. Um, so we're just going through you know the motion and. Um, you know, the process. So well, uh, let me know when you're open so I can help yeah. you, uh, you know, spread the word for sure. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I mean, in, it's... The, in the meantime, there's a, a, a also Instagram uh, Spice Art Club. So that's the handle at Spice Art Club. I think that's the name. <laughs> yeah. So in there, <laughs> I'll, I'll put it down in the comments. So people will know where you to can go. You can follow. You can follow. You can follow that right now. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. So in that space, in the Instagram, I sometimes post tips and tricks as well. Now that goes back to what you asked me about, like how do you grow your Instagram post? Spice Art Club, in a way, it, the Instagram post is also um, a, a case study I'm I'm doing. Like, okay, mine is. Um, have a lot of flow followers, you know, not a lot, but it's quite a lot uh, compared to Spice Art Club. I just started that maybe a couple of months, ago, not a couple of months, maybe four or five months ago. Um, and in there, I don't po post a lot of like, this is my work because that's not about my work, like about how do you grow a community? So that's how I post over there. It's a different kind of post, but sometimes I use, well, yeah, I use my own work to explain things. Um, so I'm I'm looking at how that how that thing grow, right? Um, and I can I can see the difference between when I post even in my my own feed, when I post my work versus when I post a helpful post. It's a yeah, different. That's why reach. you know it's it's funny that you're saying that because I always say. Um, tap into your cre creativity. It's not I, but it's a we because mm -hmm. it's a community based project. And I yeah. wouldn't be able to do it without all of you. So, yeah. you know, it's always a we in my vocabulary. It's never an I. And I yeah. think that you're saying That's exactly good. that. And um, I'm opening it up for questions. We only have like a few more minutes into this in amazing inter interview. And I just want to um, have you show again the painting that it's up for grabs. Um, yeah. Again, we're asking $400 um, for this incredible um, painting um, that Nino is donating today. Remember $400 for Feeding America. You will be helping 4,000 people in need of food. So let's keep going. Let's keep, you know, helping people in need and, um, yeah. And um, Nino, any final comments that you want to share with us? Final comments? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, someone just said they will definitely join the Spice Art Club, so that's okay, pretty awesome. Good. I love yeah, it. Yeah, I yeah. love it too. I I would say. Um, I just want to say thank you to you for for creating this uh, movement. Uh, I think it's been awesome. how, how much have you raised again? Thirty something thousand? Yeah, it's uh, over thirty four thousand. Um, yeah. So three hundred forty thousand meals. That's pretty cool. I know. I know. That's awesome. Yeah, and um, I do have some news coming up. Uh, very exciting news that I'm going to share on my newsletter. So make sure that you. Um, join me um, and sign up for my newsletter. So you'll get that because mm -hmm. it's going to be really mm -hmm. fun. And, cool. um, and uh, I just want to say, um, oh, somebody asked how big is your studio? Uh, I don't know, 14 by 13 feet, something like that. It's not very big. It's, I would say yeah. it's a, it's a small kitchen. But I, you know, and to... one more question since we got to go, unfortunately, you always oh, seem no, so yeah. relaxed, fluid and fresh when you paint. Do you spend yeah. much time analyzing and editing or do you just let it go and flow? 
I I do analyzing at the end usually or middle to the end. But I, once once you do it a lot, then you automatically sort of like analyzing, but not being too stressful about it. I don't know if that makes sense. You know. Yeah, it does. But I think sense. yeah. But I think the biggest thing is just be a kid. Be try to be a kid. That's why we. I feel like that's why we paint. Like you know, go back to your. Yours young. I I love that. I love that yeah. so much. And yeah. I can't thank you enough, Nino, for joining me again today. And um, hopefully, someone will buy this incredible painting. Um, and we'll be donating again this, um, incredible painting from you. And um, just thank you for being such a good thank friend you. to me and to this incredible community of people that love you and respect you. Thank thank you thank thank you for everything. Uh, good luck again with this movement. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Nina. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. 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 bye.